What's going on guys? Welcome back to United View. Hope everyone is doing very well. We're back with another transfer view. Yes, we've got some latest updates in the transfer market that Manchester United are attempting to undertake right now. We've got the reaction to the rejected third bid by Manchester United to Chelsea for Mason Mount. Manchester United's frustration with how that deal is going. Are they going to move on to other targets? Are they going to meet up with Chelsea face-to-face, -face, as Chelsea had offered? Are they going to go back in with another bid? What's the budget like at Manchester United? There's plenty to get into when it comes to Mason Mount. Plus, we're going to be talking goalkeepers once again. There's a rumor going around today that Andre Onana's changed his agent in order to secure this Manchester United move for him. So... We're we'll going to talk a little bit about that. Speaking of goalkeepers too, Diogo Costa. Porto reportedly have a bit of a concern that United might actually be trying to sign a David De Gea replacement this summer. But the issue is, it might not be Diogo Costa. And that's a problem for Porto because they need cash. So we'll speak about that too. Speaking of exits, David De Gea is going to be an exit. We're also going to talk about an exit, or possibly two, must sell exits. One being Eric Bailly, the other being Alex Tellers. And a little bit of an update when it comes to the takeover. So there's plenty to get into in this video. Should be so short. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for me to say. So be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. I speak too quickly and I stumble on my words. That's the problem. Remember, you can join the UV Members Club too. Links in the video description. You get your badges, your emojis and your exclusive members only content. So... Mason Mount, yes, let's talk about Mason Mount. If you are not aware, yesterday was all about the third bid for Mason Mount going in from Manchester United. Two bids had previously gone in. They'd both been rejected pretty swiftly and quickly by Chelsea. The third one went in yesterday. The timeline was in the morning, we were told a bid was going to go in. In the afternoon, we were told a bid has gone in. And in the evening, we were told the bid's been rejected. Now, that latest bid was for £50 million plus £5 million in add-ons, so a total package of £55 million. Chelsea counted that and said... 58 plus 7 was what they were looking for. They're looking for about a £65 million total package. Of course, Manchester United, they don't want to spend more than £60 million for the England internationals. So today it's been reported, unsurprisingly, I, su I suppose, that um, by Samuel Luckers from the Manchester Evening News, that Manchester United are unhappy with Chelsea as negotiations over a possible transfer for Mason Mount continue. Now, the Manchester United football director, John Murto, is understood to have taken a dim view of Chelsea's strategy of communicating United's bids through the club's dedicated correspondence in London. I.e., he's not happy that this entire transfer is being played out in public. I would maybe counter to him say it's Manchester United. Everything is played out in public, particularly when you move so slowly and some of the bids don't really... You know, you know they're going to get rejected. Remember when we put that first bid in, knowing that it's going to be rejected? When you do stuff like that, it gets played out in the media, particularly when you're Man United, because everything gets played out in the media. Now, granted, when Chelsea rejected that bid last night, pretty much every journalist came out at the same time saying it, which would imply that Chelsea told all the journalists, we've rejected this offer, but we're happy to meet with Manchester United, etc., etc., etc. They all said the same thing, which suggests, hey that Chelsea are talking to the media regarding this too. So John Murto is not happy about that. In addition, Samuel Lucas is reporting that sources have said that John Murto's, quote, hands are tied due to United's finances and there is a precise bidding structure to progress with potential deals. If United opt to walk away from Mount, they have at least four other midfield targets to turn to, while play sources say any addition would be acceptable, but Mount is the manager's, Eric Ten Hag's preferred option. Um, United believe that Chelsea are overvaluing Mount as he is out of contract next year and wants to leave. United's bargaining position is weakened by a tight budget. They do not want to compromise amid their intention to sign a striker. United finalise a long list of targets per position in April and Ten Hag began holding video calls with players before the season had ended. So there's a lot to break down there. First of all, obviously, as I mentioned, I can understand John Murta being frustrated that Chelsea are saying things to the media. But ultimately, again, if you would, if you did this deal quickly, that wouldn't happen. So I don't have a ton of sympathy when it comes to that. Of course, um, Man United will be unhappy with Chelsea over the possible transfer of Mason Mount with these negotiations because they're right to be frustrated in the sense of we're getting into territory. I mean, frankly, we're already well into the territory of he's being massively overpriced. He is a player that's got one year left on his contract. Granted, he's 24. He's a homegrown player. 
Um, so Chelsea will put a bit of his English tax as well. So they'll put a bit of extra value on his price tag. But still, we're in territory of it, him being overvalued. Absolutely. I mean, realistically, you would say a year left on his contract, he's worth 40 million, 45, max, max 50 million. So we're already into the territory of him being overpriced. When we were quoted initially 70, 75 million pounds, it was ridiculous because... He's not worth that. Even if he had a five-year contract, he probably wouldn't be worth that, let alone when he's got one year left on his contract. So I understand the frustration when it comes to that. However, I'm not going to come on here in this video and act all sympathetic to John Murtaugh and be like, oh, he's doing his best. You know, the part where it said, you know, sources say Murtaugh's hands are tied due to United's finances and there is a precise bidding structure to progress with potential deals. I say, well... <laughs> For, for me, the, this whole report from Samuel Lutkus came out as a kind of woe is me. We're trying really hard, but they're making it really, really difficult for us. And our boo-hoo, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. No, we've seen this before. The, you're dealing, the reason that Chelsea are doing this with you is because they know Manchester United's reputation. Remember when the second bid went in? This is our final bid. A third bid went in. Chelsea know a fourth bid's going to come. They know that. They know United's reputation is overpay and undercharge. That's the motto for United in the transfer market. So you can't you can't be like, oh, my hands are tied. Our, our finances are difficult. Yeah, our finances are challenging. But again, that's upon you to fix that and figure that out. That's your fault too because you overspent last year too. In addition to that, in addition to that, I understand the takeover, the Glazers. I know that they'll put money in. They'd have a bit more flexibility with the transfer window. Totally get that. But... They overspent last year. The budget was there for last summer, for January, and for this summer. And they knew that, and they overspent regardless. Because they took too long doing transfer deals. Because they took too long going in for people like Anthony and said, we're not going to overpay. And eventually, they overpaid, and it took money out in January. And it's taken money out of this summer as well. In addition to the Glazers being stingy and selling the club at the pace of a snail on one leg that's been hibernating for a thousand years. That's how slowly things are going on with the takeover. We'll talk about that a bit later on. But at the same time, if you go, ah, oh, my hands are tied when it comes to the finances, how about you also do your job too and you sell players, you offload players and you don't look at someone like Eric Bailly and be like, oh, uh, two million or uh, Anthony Langer, 10 million. As KG says, charge high, they're doing it to you. So the whole article really came across to me as a kind of woe is me Oh, we're really, really trying. Come on. And the part where it says that United, if they opt to walk away, we've got at least four other midfield targets to turn to. Honestly, and I know this probably is a negative video. I've been traveling all day, folks. <laughs> I'm in, a, I'm in a, a grouchy mood. But honestly, I don't believe that. I just don't believe that. I'm sure they've got names on paper of people they might turn to and alternative targets they might turn to. But let's not kid around here. Do we really think United are going to walk away from this deal? We're going to overpay for him. And Chelsea know that. That's why Chelsea reject the first three bids because they know what Manchester United do in the transfer market. They're slow and they overpay because they're slow. So I don't, I don't necessarily fault Chelsea for being like, we know these guys, they'll cave in. And this attempt at United trying to bluff that they've got four other targets, as I mentioned, names might be on paper, but have they done the due diligence when it comes to that? Probably not. And even so, do you really trust them to get those alternative deals done, considering that this Mason Mount which deal, which feels pretty much like a slam dunk, an easy deal to do, they've taken four weeks, so we're going to start from scratch, zero, and we're going to get this other midfielder. Rabio is going to stay at Juventus, not that he's the same as Mason Mount. Um, Kai Sado, I see people talking about that. Chelsea seem to be the front runners with him. That's why they're selling all of these players for FFP restrictions and also to be able to buy someone like Moises Kai Sado. In addition to that, as I mentioned, the Mason Mount deals are pretty much a slam dunk because the player wants to come to us. He's told Chelsea, I'm not putting pen to paper on a new deal. I'm leaving. I want to go to Manchester United. Fix it. Sort it out. Negotiate a transfer. I'm off. I'm not staying. Kaiseido, who's to say if we go in for him, Chelsea don't go in for him? Or they don't, I don't know, sell mounts elsewhere. There are rumours about buying being interested. Again, I don't see Mason Mount going anywhere but Manchester United this summer. That's if he does leave, of course, because there's still the option that he might stay and just sit out his contract. You never know. So the idea that United are kind of threatening, well, we'll walk away and we've got at least four other, four other people that we're looking at. I just, again, I, I just, I don't buy it. I, I don't buy it. I think United are... It's a, it's a 
a, a bad attempt at bluffing to me because every everything they've said previously um, with <laughs> bids two and three being the last bids, take it or leave it, and going back in, they've already shown their hands. And I understand John Murto now, he, yeah, he's in a difficult situation because they were pretty firm about the third bid's going to be the last bid and they've rejected it. And everyone knows United's going to go back in. When they go back in, every club you negotiate with is going to take the piss because they've seen how you operate. But again, that's his fault. That's the way he's negotiated this deal. That's how he's negotiated the deals last year. We tried to give John Murtaugh and Richard Arnold a clean slate last year because Edward Wood, Matt Judge, they were the boogeymen when it came to how we negotiated transfers in the past. And last summer, uh, it was kind of the same, slow and overpaying. Ultimately, it worked out in the end because we got in the Champions League. But still, it could have and should have been done much, much quicker. And it feels like... We haven't learned from it. Granted, our budget is smaller, but you've got to be smarter, quicker, and more creative when it comes to that. And it just kind of feels like a story where they've gone, oh, oh what are we supposed to do? Figure it out. Figure it out, or actually legitimately have alternatives to walk away to. But I don't believe that they do. <laughs> or they've at least done the due diligence of walking away to them. And I can see a bit like how we had alternatives when we went in for An Anthony last year that actually we kind of really didn't and we ended up going back for him for more. I could see United doing that too. So when I see this article come out today, I just go... Phew. And what must Eric Ten Hag be thinking too? If that report is accurate in the sense of we had a long list of targets per position in April and Ten Hag was holding video calls with players before the season had even ended, then he must be going, "What? where are we? What's going on? No wonder he has to push these guys, push and push and push and push, because otherwise the deals don't get done. He had to push incredibly hard last year to get a lot of the deals done too. And again, I do agree with United. When they say that they believe Chelsea are overvaluing Mount. Of course they are. Again, he shouldn't he is not worth sixty million. He's not worth sixty five million. But Chelsea the only reason Chelsea are doing this is because they know how Man United operate. So you're dealing with your own mistakes. That's ultimately the situation when it comes to uh uh, John Murtaugh at the moment with this with this deal. So we'll see what happens when it comes to Mason Mount if United do go back in. As I said, I do believe if United make one more bid, I think that'll be the final bid. I see us ending up paying 55 plus 5 and uh, that 60 million package will be enough to get it done. Um, but next week will be the one for that, certainly. But it's just, it's typical United operating in the transfer market, really, isn't it? Andre Onana. So obviously there were these uh, reports and uh, rumours of Andre Onana's agent being in Manchester this week to discuss a possible move with Manchester United for Andre Onana for the Inter Milan goalkeeper. It hinges on David De Gea, whether he's going to stay or go. It's looking more and more likely that he's going to go next week. Uh, as of right now, is going to be his final week as a Manchester United player. His contract expires on the 30th of June. Come July 1st, he's going to be a free agent. So you would think sometime next week we're going to find out which direction we're heading when it comes to a goalkeeper. Now, there were reports and rumours this morning overnight suggesting that there was an agent change for Andre Onana and he had decided to change his representation and the reason he had decided to do that was because he wanted his new agent to come in, facilitate a move to Manchester United and get it done, basically. Well, Fabrizio Romano has kind of poured water on that a little bit. He has said, quote, rumours of an agent change for Andre Onana are wide of the mark. His agent was and remains Albert um, Bottins, who's taken care of negotiations. Bottins met with Manchester United earlier this week. Chelsea have asked about Onana two weeks ago into one at least 50 million euros plus add-ons. So, Nothing's changed when it comes to the agents of uh, representation of Andre Onana. Again, if you ask me now, my prediction, um, you know, not to say that I'm on a roll. I hate those people that point score when it comes to predictions. Um, but I said yesterday that I didn't think Chelsea would accept that third bid for Mason Mount. My second prediction is that Andre Onana will be a Manchester United player this transfer window. I think that Eric Ten Hag's made his mind up about the goalkeeping situation. As much as United say that the possibility of De Gea staying is still on the table, I think that United, um, or certainly Ten Hag's made his mind up and... If your agent is having um, actual talks with John Murto or United uh, representatives, that implies that there's that this is going to happen. And Ten Hag knows the players, work with him at Ajax. Chelsea have kind of backed off a little bit. Pochettino reportedly has said that he's willing to work with Kepa Ariza Balaga. The, the, the price is good. 
let's face it, 50 million euros. So that's 40, what, five-ish million pounds for a Champions League final goalkeeper that the manager knows it's good with his feet. That's not a bad deal whatsoever. And I think United are going to be looking at that. And that's that's a player that isn't overvalued, really. Again, his contract goes until 2027. Granted, Inter are making pure profit on him because they got him on a free transfer last year. But they need the money. And that's, again, pure profit on a player that they got for a free. So I still think that Andre Nana, that move's going to happen. Um, and... Uh, Reportedly, it's going to be the same agent that's facilitating it. Now, if Onana comes in, I guess that means Diogo Costa will not be coming in. And reportedly, this is a bit of a worry for Porto. Uh, according to a Record, which is a Portuguese-based outlet, Portuguese giants Porto are actually concerned that Manchester United may be moving away from a deal for goalkeeper Diogo Costa and instead targeting Andre Onana. Manchester United have established contacts for the Inter Milan goalkeeper after being put off by Porto's 75 million euro euro asking price for the goalkeeper and you know what they should be worried as I mentioned because I think United and Ten Hag have made their mind up not only on David De Gea but also on the goalkeeper that they want it was there early on the budget's tight and the budget's short and the budget is small and John Murto's getting frustrated because he thought he could get Mason Mount for a smaller amount than Chelsea are charging him but 75 million euros um Maybe it's the going rate for a good goalkeeper nowadays. And I understand that there are there are pros and cons to Costa versus Onana. A pro being, for example, Costa's much younger than Andre Onana. He's 23, 24. Onana's 27, I believe. Something like that. Maybe a little bit older. So there are pros and cons to this one. But money ultimately talks. And Onana's got a lot going for him right now when you think about it when it comes to this move to Manchester United. Probably the most important one. He's cheaper to Ten Hag's worked with him. And as I've said before, Ten Hag loves players that he's worked with previously. So I think Porto should absolutely be right to worry. And the only way that they can get Diogo Costa back into this goalkeeping race for Manchester United, lower that asking price because otherwise United are in, aren't interested. And this, is, and this is good business. This is how you operate good business. You genuinely have a target that you're working on. There's a good value for money there in Onana. And you go to Port, uh, go to Porto and say, look, we're going with this other guy. Unless you give us a really good offer, we ain't interested. And United know that Porto need the money as well. They've got their financial issues. That's how you negotiate a deal. Obviously, I'm simplifying it massively. I'm not an expert negotiator. But that's, that's, that's how you operate in the transfer market. You have legitimate alternatives. Alternatives that you have spoken to. Like with the midfielder stuff, what other midfielders have we been linked to apart from Declan Rice for a creative player plus cash deal that everyone kind of knows probably isn't going to happen. We're outsiders and City are probably going to win that race. This is how you operate. You've got, again, Onana. You've got Costa. You've got Rea. And you've got Onana, you've spoken to his agents, you've got a decent price, and then you can go to Porto and say, we're going to go with this guy, so unless you give us something good, we're not interested. That's how you operate. So, as I mentioned, I think Porto are probably right uh, to be concerned that that deal isn't going to happen because I think Ten Hag and United have made their mind up that if De Gea leaves, it's going to be Andre Onana in goal for Manchester United next season. Next, some departures. Marcells. This is a bit of a short one, but in the same article that Samuel Lucas wrote for the Manchester Evening News, he has said that Eric Bailly and Alex Tellez are regarded as the, quote, must-sells by Manchester United this summer. More outgoings depend on whether United receive acceptable offers and if a superior replacement is attainable. Now, pump the brakes. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's it. That's the only players you're looking at and you're going, uh, Baye and Tellet, must sells. They're the must sells. There's way more than that. Maguire, McTominay, Alanga. Do I need to continue on? I can go on if you want me to. There are plenty more players that should be going this summer. And again, funding our transfer business if our budget's tight. The fact that you look, the only two players were like, well, Baye and Tellez. Well, obviously, they're a given. But the other, there should be other must sells too. And if you're open, and if we've seen these reports going, well, a lot of the spending also is going to depend on player sales. And the only two you've targeted for absolutely dead on they're going to be sold is Eric Bay and Alex Tellers. How much money are you going to make for them? It was just the other day saying they're going to sell by for like two million. Tellers won't be much more. I know he just won the Europa League. Maybe you talk to Sevilla. Maybe you can get a little bit more. But he's an older fullback. They don't go for that much, even if he is an international. So we need more more departures than Eric Bay and Alex Tellers as the must-sells. Again, Maguire, 
Alanga, uh, McTominay, Henderson. How is Dean Henderson not a must-sell at this point? He's in that same category. And I'm sure I'm probably missing a couple too. So, you know, you could put even Jane Sancho in there. I know people go, oh, no, he deserves another year. But if you get a good offer for Jane Sancho, you take it this summer, particularly, again, if you need to fund your transfer business. So let me know what your thoughts about that in the comment section below. Who are the other must-sells for Manchester United in this transfer window? Finally, a bit of a takeover update as well. Ben Jacobs basically just reaffirming what he had said. Uh, what is it, the 24th today? This was on the 11th, so 13 days ago, about two weeks ago. And that is that he said, quote, this remains my understanding. He was doing a quote tweet regarding exclusivity that both the 9-2 Foundation and Ineos have been told in the process letters exclusivity won't be granted. There's still no plans to exclusively negotiate with one group. This isn't a negative, means both groups are being ready to win pending a green light. So, after all the craziness, I was thinking this while I was traveling today, after all the craziness that we got last week, Companies House, Reuters, and I saw Reuters did an interview with Stratford Paddock, big up those guys, um, it's a great get, a really good interview, I'd recommend going to watch it. Um, the guy that wrote it kind of backed off how hard he was going, he was kind of sort of implying that maybe he, that was his feeling, our sources believe, but the way that they wrote that article was that they were in negotiations for exclusivity. And then when you actually hear the interview, it's kind of like, well, we believe that he might be the front runner and certainly the Glazers are considering his bid. So essentially we're back to square one, which is nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody's going to be exclusive. They're both doing the final stage. And eventually one day, I guess the Glazers are going to wake up and go, it's you. You're going to get it. You're going to win the race. Now, Ben Jacobs continues by saying a preferred bidder Common, commonly associated with exclusive negotiations would obviously add public clarity and feel like an update because it would entail the Glazers showing their hands. But things are far more are, are more advanced than this with both 92 Foundation and Ineos. Both groups are already undertaking tasks commonly associated with a preferred bidder, which is a bit atypical. They are getting ready to start the completion process in case they are picked. And that's why with their offers executionable, exclusivity is not currently needed. And without it, there is obviously remains competitive tension. Fans are understandably growing frustrated by the lack of updates and the uncertainty that clearly overshadows Manchester United summer. But the lack of any announcement doesn't mean things aren't moving behind the scenes so Ben Jacobs was essentially saying because you don't hear anything doesn't mean things aren't happening they're happening for both but the Glazers still ultimately haven't decided and that's really when we're going to start to see proper movement isn't it whenever the Glazers make their mind up that's when we're going to hear something. And of course, when they do, we'll be live. We'll cover it here at United View. So there you go, guys. A bit of a transfer update for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Um, and remember, you can join the UV Members Club. Links in the video description. There'll be plenty of more content in the future. We'll be live every morning, 9 a.m. Transfer View 2, plus the pre-record videos, plus the emergency lives, plus maybe some special extra content. Hmm, what am I talking about? You have to wait and see very soon. Peace.